Okay, I want to see if this power series, uh, we looked at this one a minute ago in the first video. Let's see if this power series uh, converges, or again, that's not the question. For what x values does it converge? What is its interval of convergence? And uh, like I said, you do a ratio test. We're not doing him. We do a ratio test on this guy. Uh, so here we go. We do the limit as n goes to infinity. You know, the ratio test means you do the nth plus one term. That means you replace all these n's with n plus one. When I replace that with an n plus one, I get negative one to the n. I get x minus one to the n plus one, and it's all over n plus one. That's the nth plus one term. And then you divide by the nth term. But what I like to do is flip it up and multiply by the reciprocal of the nth term. And there's the nth term the reciprocal of the nth term. So I'm multiplying by n, negative 1 to the n minus 1, x minus 1 to the n. And I've got to try to do this limit. Uh, it simplifies quite a bit. You know, <clears throat> this negative 1, let's see what's going on. Negative 1 to a power, negative 1 to a one higher power. I can cancel these negative 1s, and I'm left with a negative 1 here. You know what, it's in absolute value, so that negative one is going to get absorbed by the absolute value. Uh, it's going to go away in just a minute. What about this x minus one to the n, x minus one to the n plus one? I can cancel those. It leaves me an x minus one to the first. Uh, that's about all I can do. I can't do any canceling there. Let's see what I have here. I have the limit uh, as, sorry, as n goes to infinity. What I like to do is pull the x minus 1. It's the variable of the limit is n. I like to take the x and treat it like a constant, pull it out of the limit. Of course, it's got absolute value on it. So I'm pulling out the absolute value of x minus 1. I'm left with n over n plus 1. That was an absolute value, but those are positive numbers as we head toward infinity. And this is an easy limit. You guys know the answer to this limit. That's 1. Uh, it's infinity over infinity, same, it's, it's 1. And so the answer now is this absolute value of x minus 1 times 1. Again, the conclusion of a ratio test is this converges when it's less than 1. Well, when is this less than 1? Ah, well, it's a little, now it's a little absolute value inequality here. Uh, when, when the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1, I like to make a little sandwich. x minus 1 is between 1 and negative 1 is what that means. I'll add this 1 to find the interval for x. I get x is less than 2, and x is less than 0, greater than 0. There is the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence. It's an interval. For those x's, this series converges. For any x's outside of that, it doesn't converge. Now there's a little technicality. So far what I have for the interval of convergence is 0 to 2. But what we're really not sure, if you remember the ratio test, this is a little sticky point here, we're supposed to check these endpoints. You know, the ratio test, if, what, what, what happens when the ratio test equals 1? If you remember, it's inconclusive. When the equals 1, it's inconclusive. So if I had an equal to on here, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening at these endpoints. That's the inconclusive part. So I really should check each endpoint. You're supposed to check these endpoints. Now I'm not a huge fan of this. This this takes the problem and makes it a little more tedious. Um, <clears throat> but you plug in a zero for x, and then you're back. You're no longer a power series with a variable x. When you plug in a 0 for x, you're now this series. So if I'm checking x equals 0, I'm now this series. Uh, negative 1 to the n minus 1. What I do? Plug in a 0 for x. So that's a negative 1 to the n all over n. This is kind of funny here. Um, what's going on here? You know, that's always... Uh, you know, when that's even, that's odd. When that's uh, even, that's odd. In other words, that's an odd power, that's an even power. So that's a, when he's positive, he's negative. When he's positive, he's negative. This is always a negative one. 
this reduces to just a flat negative one over n. Now, if you take out the negative one, uh, it's negative one times one over n. That's a pretty famous series. That's called the harmonic series. It's a p series, and it diverges. And therefore, at zero, it does not converge. At zero, it diverges. So I'm not going to include the zero. If I check the two, it gets a little weird here. Let's see what happens at two. Uh, that's a negative one to the n minus one. When I plug in the two, two minus one is just a one to the n. A one to the n is just always a one. Plug in the two in for x, and I'm looking at this series. Well, this is an alternating harmonic series. I really never discussed this with you. Using the alternating series test, which I glossed over in section 9.5, um, you take the limit of an alt way. If it's an alternating series and the limit is zero, it converges. So this guy converges. I'm glossing. Don't, don't worry your pretty little head about that too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I check the endpoints. The zero diverge. The two converge. The actual interval of convergence is 0 to 2 and it in, oops and it includes the 2 the actual interval of convergence is 0 less than x which is less than or equal to 2 and this is another famous series from 9.10 uh, this turns out to be the natural log function this is the natural log series this is the infinite power series that is the natural log function. And it converges to the natural log function. For all x's? No, no, no. For x's that live between 0 and 2, including the 2. All right, thank you very much. 9, 8, power series. Got a few more things to say. Moving on into 9, 9, 9, 10. Keep working hard.